This is Nebby's story, chapter two, the first night. What were they going to do? Well, first, Lou was going to panic. Here, do something with him. I have to get stuff ready, Lou said as she handed the tiny bundle to Mark. Lou found a heating pad and a black fleece blanket, then stacked in a small, a small wicker basket. Sorry, she set it on the kitchen countertop. Mark paced around the kitchen with the puppy held gently in his arms. He rocked the, he rocked him, and bounced him like a baby because that was all he knew to do, all he knew how to do. Mark was tall, which made the puppy in his hands look even smaller. We're not puppy people, Mark said. Lou and Mark were dog people. Sure, but they had never cared for a puppy this young or this tiny. I'm familiar with bottle feeding, but this is a neonatal puppy. What do we do? How do we feed him? What do we feed him? How the heck are we going to do this? Lou rummaged through the kitchen cabinets and grabbed a baby bottle. But it was the same size as the puppy. It was way too big. We'll reach out to the rescue community for help, she said. She had never de dealt with a flat-out newborn puppy who was less than one day old. Were they bottle-fed the same way as a larger one-week-old puppy? She needed to find out. She adjusted the he headband that was holding back her short, dark brown hair with one hand as she reached her phone with the other. Lou knew a lot of other people who ran animal rescue organizations, and they were always more than willing to help one another when they could. Her friends were sure to have some advice on caring for a pup this young. Though she didn't think any of them would know how to care for a dog with only two legs, Lou and Mark would need to research that part, research that part on their own. We need to go to the grocery store and get some raw goat's milk, Lou said. All dogs can survive on that. At least you knew that much, Mark, Mark gently placed that pup on the heated blanket, then grabbed his keys and coat. He stepped out into the cold and jogged toward his truck. He shook his head as he climbed in. It was dark out now. He hoped this puppy would live through the night. This was stressful, but he knew this chaos would be worth it if the little puppy made it. Mark knew that he and Lou were all this puppy had, but most importantly, Mark believed in Lou, and she believed animals are important. She wanted to make a difference, even if it was only one dog at a time. Today, she answered the call. She always did, and she never hesitated. Mark loved that about her. Lou had to keep the puppy hydrated while Mark was gone. They were going to need a syringe. Syringe, I'm sorry, to feed this little guy. She found one in a drawer and topped this with a syringe tip. Then filled it with a bit of water and squeezed it slowly into the puppy's mouth, just a little bit at a time. He seemed to like it, which was a relief to Lou. They were going to keep this puppy alive, drop by drop. The puppy was starting to relax. He was thirsty but tired. Someone was putting liquid in his mouth, which was thank which he was thankful for. There had been a lot of loud noises, then a cold breeze, but now it was quiet, and he was feeling warm and calm and tired, so tired. When Mark returned with the goat's milk, Lou showed him how to feed the pup. First, they warmed the goat's milk, not too hot and not too cold. Oh, sorry, guys. Not too cold. And then fed the puppy, with the syringe squeezing just a little bit of liquid into his mouth at a time. Just like a human baby, the puppy had to be burped afterward. Mark placed his finger on the puppy's chest. Lou, Lou was giving him step-by-step -step directions, which she was reading from the messages her dog rescue friends had, se had sent her. Hold him right between the nub and the nubby ch ch chicken wing, Lou said. She was describing two short limbs where the puppy 
its front legs should have been. They weren't completely missing, but they weren't very underdeveloped. One was a stump, and one was a little bit longer with an elbow-like bend. Pat and then, Pat and then listened for a burp. Mark did as he was told, and the puppy gave a small burp. And just like every human baby, the little puppy had to be fed every two hours, even in the middle of the night. It was going to be a long night. Mark was already exhausted. They decided he would head to bed early. Lou planned to stay up late reading so she could do two feedings back to back. Then, in the middle of the night, Lou would go to bed, and Mark would wake up and take the next two feedings. This way, each of them could hopefully get a four-hour stretch of sleep. Besides feeding the puppy every two hours, there was one other issue that was required constant tending: the heating pad that. Was warning the puppy's blanket was meant for humans. It was automatically shut off after a short period of time for safety reasons. But puppies can't regulate their own body temperature until they are four, four or five weeks old. They usually stay close to their mothers and their brothers and sisters for warmth. But this puppy obviously. Couldn't do that. The heating pad was keeping him alive. If it accidentally turned off, the puppy could die. Mark set a timer for one hour and forty-five minutes, so they could make sure that the heating pad stayed warm throughout the night. Both Mark and Lou crossed their fingers. For the next twenty-four hours, Lou and Mark gave the tiny puppy around the clock care. He made it through the first night, then the second. When the tiny pup may have looked weak, but he clearly wasn't ready to give up. Two days after being born, he was still fighting. It felt like a miracle, but every day that followed was scary for Lou and Mark. This puppy would continue to need all the love and protection he could get, and the fact was about to be made even more clear to them. Lou's friend called to let her know that she was bringing the rest. Of the litter into the vet to get checked on, she offered to bring the two-legged puppy in with the rest of the siblings. Lou was tired. The last two days had been long, and she and Mark had barely slept. Thanks for offering, but we'll take him in our on our own. She told her friend. Lou looked at the puppy sleeping peacefully on his heating pad. The sight of him made her heart warm. A short while later, her phone rang. It was Lou's friend calling again. She should have been busy at the veterinarian's office by now. What could she possibly want? It turned out that her friend had called about something else. About something else. Something that hadn't even run through Lou's mind. If you're not up. To taking care of him, the vet said he could put him to sleep. Lou couldn't believe her ears. She glanced at the little white puppy. I'm sorry, at the little white pup. His pink nose and pink paws as he slept. He was so helpless, but he had lived two full days, and Lou knew he could live longer with the help from her and Mark. Why would we want to do that? Lou asked, "With the exception of what's on the outside, you're looking at theoretically at a theoretically healthy dog. He's just missing two limbs." Her mind started spinning. She didn't know if this puppy was perfectly healthy, but there was a but there was a chance he was right, and she was willing to find out why. If someone was willing to give him a chance, would. They put this dog to sleep just because he's different. Lou was growing furious. Not going to happen, Lou said. Nubby's now in the rescue program, and we'll take it from here. She hung up the phone. Who would give up a on a puppy just because he needs a little extra care? She thought. This puppy isn't a typical puppy, but all he needs is a little more love and time. Different is not. Disposable. Mark and Lou gave a hug. Nubby was the perfect name for this little pup. We'll do everything we can to help Nubby. Mark said to Lou, "I believe in you, and our pack believes in you too."